Here we have Michael J. Fox, a legendary actor. And I don't say legendary based off his full body of work. In my opinion, some actors become legendary after one movie. And that one movie for me regarding Michael was Back to the Future. Well, if you didn't know, Michael has been suffering from Parkinson's for the past 30 years. And recently he made some comments regarding his very own mortality. Now, I think there's a lot we can learn from Michael's comments regarding his own death. So let's go ahead and play the clip and I'll give my take after. When you examine the totality of the world, meaning everyone that exists in this world, you generally have two types of people in regards to the topic point of this video. Number one, you have the type of person that seems to have it all together. From the outside, it always appears that everything is just fine with this type of person. Their health is good, they've got money, success, they may be well respected. And then you've got the individual where their life is an open book. They may be a criminal or serving out a prison sentence, or they may be just like Michael J. Fox, suffering from a debilitating disease like Parkinson's. What I'm talking about is circumstances that either create pity or stern judgments from those outside looking in. Okay, that describes the second person I'm talking about. And out of these two types of people, the latter is always going to be the best option in regards for salvation. And why is that? It's because they can't hide the fact that they don't have it all together. They can't hide the fact that they are healthy. They can't hide it. They're not healthy. They're ill. They can't hide the fact that they need help, that they need a physician to heal them. Okay, The people that seem to have it all together in their pride, they hide behind the image of normality. And because of that, they never truly examine themselves. Now, I want to look at three quotes that Michael J. Fox said in that video I showed you. Quote number one, he says, I fear death is banging on the door. Quote number two, I'm not going to lie. It's getting hard. It's getting harder. It's getting tougher. Every day is tougher. Quote three. I fear that I will not make it to 80. I wish I could have 10 minutes alone in a room with Michael J. Fox. There is a way that you don't have to be afraid. There is an answer to that fear. Okay, Michael J. Fox is tired. His body is tired. But the persistent nag of the reality that death is knocking at his door makes it even worse. Now, why do I wish that I could spend 10 minutes alone with Michael J. Fox? Because there is a message with an answer, with an answer to his fear. Okay, There is good news. He doesn't have to be afraid of death. That's good news. How glorious is that? That God, the God, the God of this universe became a man, born of a virgin, lived a perfectly righteous life, went to the cross, an innocent man, and became a propitiation for sinners. First Peter 2.24, he bore our sins in his body on the cross and he finished it. He finished it. For who? For me, for you, for anyone who would humble themselves, repent and believe the gospel. So that what? So that him who had no sin would impute his righteousness to us who have done nothing but sin. Listen, I don't fear death. I do agree with R.C. Sproul's sentiments when he said somewhat, when he said regarding how he fears the means God may use to get him to death. But death itself, true Christians, we don't fear that because we have a hope. And that hope says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Second Corinthians 5, 8. And you know what happens? Remember the first type of person I described, the one that has it all together, that seems like they have it all together. You know what they do? They look at people like Michael J. Fox and they say, oh, how sad. That's sad. 
He's probably going to die soon. Okay? We're all going to die. Okay? The difference between Michael J. Fox and the first type of person I described is that Michael's illness forces him to examine the reality of death, the fact that death is knocking at the door. But it's not enough to just know that you are going to die. The next question is, what's next? Praise God that we've been given the answers to what's next. Okay. Yesterday, I just read an article about a bride that was killed 10 minutes after she had gotten married. She was hit by a drunk driver. Now, her husband is in critical condition, but she's gone. Okay. We don't have time to play. What is your life but a vapor? James 4.14. Listen, I'm so thankful that I'm in Christ. I think about this all the time. I'm honored to be able to wake up each morning with the same initial thought. Good morning, my Lord. Good morning. You've given me another day to worship you and honor you with my life. One day you will kill me, my Lord, but by faith and through that faith works, you will tell me well done. And that boast is to Christ alone and to God be the glory alone. Let us think about this. This should be a resounding thought in our mind all the time. Okay. Are you sure that you have the hope that when you die, it will be well with you? Because death is coming for all of us. Okay. I want this video to be a reminder of that. No one's safe. Out of a hundred people, a hundred die. Okay. So just let this be a thought in your mind today. Are you right with God? In order to be a true believer, in order to be a child of God, the Holy Son of God was forsaken by his father and then crushed under his own father's punishment. You say, oh, Brother Paul, you've gone too far now. Have you not read Isaiah 53, 10? It pleased the Lord to crush him. Take a 10,000 pound millstone and put another on top of it. Put a grain of wheat between them and see what you've got when it comes out on the other end. Take a dam, a hundred thousand miles high and a hundred thousand miles wide and have it break in front of you. And as the, the torrent of water rolls down towards you to engulf you, to destroy you, all of a sudden the ground opens up and drinks it down and not one drop splashes to your feet. And so Christ raised his hand up to heaven and took the wrath of God, that great cup, and drank it down. And when he cried out, it is finished, he turned it over and not one drop came out. He drank the wrath of God and satisfied justice and appeased wrath and therefore God can now be just and justify the sinner.